trapped inside the mind of someone who can't afford an education. This is a quote I'm sure many of us have heard at one point or another in our lives, but have you really considered what the quote is implying? What if our next great leader, doctor, professor, or engineer is someone who cannot afford an education? This is why I believe higher education should be free for those who seek it. My mother, who decided to further her education in order to pursue her dreams of becoming a chef, ended up in debt over $10,000. This is unfair as it pushes her away from pursuing her <coughs> dreams and puts people way over their heads in debt. Today we'll discuss the reasons why I think higher education should be free. Let's begin by looking at how free education will help aid the low graduation rate. According to Stacy Rapicon of CNBC, about 25% of working students are simultaneously employed full-time and enrolled in college full-time, which leads to a highly stressful life and high dropout rates. Students that, uh, student, uh, sorry, studies show that full-time employment may also impair student performance. On average, 55% of students are working are working and uh, going to school uh, with the increased rate of tuition cost with the high peer, with the high cost of living, it makes it hard for students to focus on their studies the way they should be able to. College completion rates have soared for the wealthy with a reported 77% graduation rate, where low income students have a graduation rate of just 19%. The sad truth is that it's becoming more and more difficult for low-income students to climb the economic ladder as the college graduation gap between the rich and the poor grows. If college were free, this would be one less stressor and limitation placed on students who in return would be more successful in completing their studies. Now that we're kind of familiar with a little bit of the benefits of free educational graduation rates, now we'll discuss our nation's economy, how our nation's economy will not thrive without giving our youth the education they deserve. Today, nearly 60% of all jobs in the U.S. require some sort of higher education. A bachelor's degree will soon become a minimum requirement for up to 35% of job openings. Given current rates, the economy will face a shortfall of 5 million workers with some higher education. This is important to us because in 10 years or so, we will be in need of important workers such as police, doctors, and teachers. But with their lack of education, these jobs will, go e will not easily be filled. Looking at our current state, Nevada <coughs> currently ranks nearly last in a few different categories, including the percentage of the adult population with a bachelor's degree or higher, as well as high school freshmen who go on to receive a degree. Even more shocking is the fact that computers are replacing many of the repetitive work, so educated workers are becoming increasingly valuable in the workplace. According to one unpublished study, the coming wave of, uh, the coming wave of technologi sorry, technological breakthroughs endangers about 47% of employment in the U.S. This is why the demand is growing fast for highly skilled, highly educated. According to the Las Vegas Review Journal of 2018, uh, or by 2018, at least 63% of all job openings will require uh, some sort of college degree. This is why it's crucial that we give people the opportunity to receive an education whether they can afford it or not. Now that we know how important a, col in a college education is to our economy, we'll discuss how other countries have benefited from free and reduced college rates. The U.S. has slipped behind many other countries in college completion rates, with fewer young Americans getting more education than their parents, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. This is mo most likely due to the rising cost of tuition in the U.S. In a study conducted by the same organization, the United States ranked 19th in education out of 28 total countries surveyed. That's completely unacceptable since America used to be in the lead as far as college edu educated young adults. Tuition continues to rise, putting college out of reach 
for the very families that need it the most. In 2012, 39% of young Americans were expected to graduate from college, compared to 60% in Iceland, where college is practically free. A fundamental principle of Iceland's educational system is that, every in, is that everyone should have equal opportunities to acquire an education, regardless of sex, religion, or economic status. Uh, many of these institutions are government funded, meaning students don't have to pay any tuition fees, but they must pay uh, for their books and their enrollment fees. This money, <coughs> uh, above the border in Canada, 47% of uh, Canadians have a post-secondary degree of some kind, compared to 39% in America, which is partly due in making post-secondary schooling more affordable and even free in certain instances. In conclusion, our youth is our future, and it's important that those who want to pursue higher education but cannot afford it have the same chance at success as everyone else. Uh, Barack Obama once said, a highly educated and skilled workforce will be the key not only to individual opportunity, but to the overall success of our economy as well. We cannot be satisfied until every child in America, and I mean every child, has the same chances for a good education that we want for our own children.